What's up guys and welcome to the channel. It's Yoana here, founder and CEO of Supwell. Today we are going to be comparing two of my favorite shoes in my rotation and the core of Saucony's Endorphin lineup. In one corner we got the Saucony Endorphin Shift 3 and in the other corner we got the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3. Let's get into it. All right guys, to kick things off, let's dive into the Saucony Endorphin Shift 3 and where this fits in Saucony's lineup. The Shift 3 is that everyday running shoe, that recovery shoe, that walking shoe in the Endorphin series. It's got a thick stack of power run underfoot for a smooth, controlled, calm, and stable ride. It's a max cushion cruiser, but not in the same way that we see others like the Saucony Triumph and the Asics Gel Nimbus do it. It's got a bit more of a firmer and less soft, squishy feel. The Speed 3, on the other hand, hand is going to be Saucony's faster daily training option. Historically with the Speed 1 and the Speed 2, it was that really fast, nimble, firm shoe that you could rip off some pace in. In the Speed 3, we see them tone it down a bit. They've widened the platform. They've added a wing to that nylon plate to give it some more stability. So the Endorphin Shift uses Saucony's EVA foam, which is called Power Run, that's also in shoes like the Ride and the Guide and the Kinvara, while the Endorphin Speed 3 uses their Power Run PB foam, which is a PIBA-based compound, that super foam, that's gonna give you that bouncy and fast sensation. And we also see the Power Run PB foam in the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3. The main difference between the two is that the Shift is gonna be firmer and more controlled, while the Speed is gonna be bouncier and also have a bit of more soft cushion feel due to that Piba foam. The Piba is super versatile. It's not like some other race foams we see which are very firm. So the speed works great at slower paces and is a great daily training option as well as that fast up tempo shoe option. In the midsole the Endorphin Speed 3 also has the nylon plate and the nylon plate doesn't function in the same exact way as a carbon plate. Rather it adds some more stability and structure to that midsole because these soft super foams can be a bit squirrely and unstable underfoot. So what that nylon plate does is it stabilizes it and it makes it so that that foam's not moving everywhere. It's not going to add as much rigidity and speed as a carbon plate, but it does make the ride a bit more controlled. The shift on the other hand doesn't have any plate, it's non-plated, but due to that power run foam being EVA based, it's going to have some inherent stability due to the firmness of the platform. In terms of the shift 3's ride, it's also going to be a bit more stable and planted on landings because of that plastic heel clip around the back. So anytime you're landing, it holds your foot in place that heel isn't going to be moving around. The Shift 3 also has a bit of a wider platform, so you're going to feel more planted when you land than on the Speed 3, though that nylon plate in the Speed 3 does add some stability. In terms of the looks, this Endorphin Speed 3 is definitely designed to be a running shoe. It has a lot of those athletic flares and brand signatures in it from Saucony. While the Shift 3 has some elements in it that let it look good as a casual shoe, and it also reflects in the colorways as well. The Shift 3 has an all white with a gum sole, which has become a very popular casual shoe colorway, while the Speed 3 colorways are a lot brighter, more vibrant, and more aggressive for looking good and fast on your speediest days. All right, heading up to the upper. The Speed 3 is gonna have a nice, stretchy, airy, and breathable upper. It's pretty roomy. It's not the widest, but it is forgiving due to that material being nice and stretchy. While the Shift's upper is a bit more structured and firm, it's still pretty breathable, and you can see it has mesh holes in it, similar to an old-school basketball jersey type of situation. Both of these shoes are gonna be great for going out on those warmer summer days, keeping your feet breathable and in comfort. I will say the laces of the Speed 3 are probably a bit more comfortable. Uh, they're these stretchy flat laces, so you're not gonna get any lace bite when you cinch them down. Versus the Shift 3, you have the Vizzy Pro Edition, which uses these glow-in-the-dark type laces. Uh, they're gonna be a bit rounder, and when you cinch them down, you're still not gonna get lace bite, but you can feel them a bit more before you start warming up into the run. I do think the fit of the Shift is a bit narrower. I have a normal width foot, but in the Shift, I can get some tightness up in the toe box. This is not gonna fit like an Ultra or a Topo with a wide toe box. It has a pretty snug toe box. I don't get that same sensation in the Speed 3, just because it's stretchier. 
All right, now for the fun part, let's talk about the ride. The Speed 3 is gonna be snappy, responsive, and bouncy, while the Shift 3 is gonna be a bit firmer and smoother. You can still pick up the pace in the Shift 3, and I actually love to use this for my everyday training paces, but it's not gonna have that inherent pop in it like the Speed 3 does just because the Speed 3 is using that PIBA-based power run PB foam. Also, the Shift is non-plated. It doesn't give you that pop off the toe in the same way that the Speed 3 does, but both of these shoes have that same speed roll geometry, which is what makes them an endorphin. So they both have nice rockers, which make it easy to keep going over those long miles. Now for the outsole, ironically the Speed 3 has more rubber on it which is a bit weird to see because what brands generally do is they put a ton of rubber on their daily training shoes which the Shift 3 is that everyday running option in the Endorphin series but I think they cut down on the rubber to save some weight because they're using that EVA foam which is a bit heavier than the Piba foam so to save weight they don't plaster the bottom of the Shift 3 which is with as much rubber. Now both of these shoes are using Saucony's XT900 rubber which is generally pretty grippy. I I ran yesterday in the Speed 3 in one of the most torrential downpours I've ever been in in my entire life. Uh, my wife was riding on the bike next to me and we were on this little highway in Cape Cod on the side. It was a complete mess. But all that's to say is I had no issues with the grip of the Speed 3. I was going through these massive puddles and just crushing and cruising. So I think you'll be fine in any type of conditions with either of these shoes due to that XT900 rubber. Now both of these shoes, due to my foot strike and the way that I wear, through shoes have seen the rubber go completely through at 300 miles and this is pretty common in all of my Saucony's. This happened in my first pair of Speed 3's, this happened in my pair of Triumphs and now I'm seeing it on both the Shift 3 and the Speed 3 here where that lateral side on the rubber and the heel area is going to be worn completely through. So in terms of who these are best for and how I use them, the Speed 3 is gonna be great for that runner who wants a faster daily training option or a really versatile shoe that can be used for the faster parts of training as well as some races. If you're a runner who's looking to target that sub three hour marathon, the Speed 3 is probably gonna be a bit too soft for you to be your racer or maybe even to be your speed day shoe, but it is gonna be a great everyday training option for those runs where you're doing maybe eight miles in strides or any type of progression runs. If you're gonna be running 5.30 paced mile repeats, then you're probably gonna want something more like the Takumi Sen that's firmer to do that really fast speed work in, but for most runners, the Speed 3 is great to handle all of that. The Shift 3, on the other hand, is really great for bigger and taller runners who want a firmer, more structured daily training option. I use it as my go-to shoe. I put so many miles on this thing, whether I wanna go faster, whether I wanna go slower, it just handles everything with ease for me. I do think it benefits from you being either bigger or taller or having a lower cadence because that firmer EVA power run foam works best when you're putting some force into it to get that resiliency and pop back off through the platform. Both of these are priced super fairly. I think the Shift 3 at $150 is a great buy. A lot of the other premium cushion trainers in the market, like the Gel Nimbus and even Saucony's own Triumph are priced at 160. So the Shift 3 being at 150 is a good buy. And the Speed 3 is priced fairly against all these other plated super trainers that we're seeing hit the market today. All right guys, there we have it. That was my comparison of the Shift 3 and the Speed 3 from the Saucony Endorphin series. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, if you're considering these. Also let me know if you've tried them and which one you prefer. I personally use both of these in my rotation. I think they're great for most runners. Saucony's just been killing it recently uh, and I'm interested to see what they do with the fourth iteration of both of these. Thank you for liking, thank you for subscribing, and I will make sure to keep you up to date on the latest and greatest in the world of performance running.